For years, modes made absolutely no sense to me. I would memorize all the patterns, the scales, and it was so confusing until this happened. Hello, this is David. Welcome to this channel, which helps you unlock your musical personality so that you can tell a better musical story, your own story on the guitar. The way that we're gonna look at modes is going to break the traditional, here's a major scale, I'm gonna start that major scale from the second note that'll become Dorian, third note Phrygian. If all that is completely foreign to you, good, because this way is much, much better. Now, before you get started, if you want a little bit more help with this, if anything is confusing, I highly suggest you sign up to the free Music Theory DNA course. The link is below, or you can just visit guitarinfusion.com, sign up for this free course, it'll really help you out. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I was exposed to modes, I was told that a major scale could be started from the second note, and it would have a different name, A Dorian in this case. And then the third note, Phrygian. So for years, that's kind of how I see the modes. Each mode is a major scale started from a different note. And to be honest, although I kind of used it, it was not really resonating with me because that brought a lot of problems. For example, if I'm building an idea within this position, which is G Ionian, this idea, for example, is this idea, this lick, G Ionian, because it's part of this area of the fretboard? Or is it an A Dorian idea? See what I did there? I'm playing the same exact idea, same exact notes, but in this area of the fretboard. Same pitches and everything, but different zone of the fretboard, which happens to be A Dorian. Now, that question had multiple answers. It could be both and it could be more than that. Really I was looking at it the wrong way and learning modes by bringing everything back to that major scale, even though it can kind of be a shortcut, it really creates problems when you want to bring out the color of these modes. I was missing something fundamental. I was missing the magnet, the, the note that attracts everything else. So this idea, if it's played over this, which is G, that would be a G Ionian position. Now, if I attracted this lick to this magnet, which is A, I'll bring that A to the fifth string open for simplicity's sake, that lick becomes A Dorian. And so really it's all about the magnet, the note that attracts everything else. Intervals are what create the emotion in music. A note by itself, how many times have I said this in the channel? For the viewers out there, <laughs> let me know. I don't know, your guess, wild guess below in the comments. But if I play a note by itself, just a pitch. If I play this pitch in relation to something else, oh, that becomes something emotionally charged, right? It can mean something else depending on what it's attracted to. And that's what modes are. Modes are colors. Modes are different alphabets that you're gonna use depending on the mood you're in, if you're the composer, or the mood the band is in, if you're playing with a band or a backing track. You've gotta follow, use the same common language in between uh, the, the musicians interacting, and that language is really established with the magnet attracting everything else. Okay, so this is how I should have learned mode to start with. I should have picked a magnet. Without a magnet, modes and scales are just finger exercises. We're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna use the low E string as a magnet and let that resonate. And so now anything I play is gonna be attracted to that magnet, creating the color of the music, the emotion of the music. But to keep things manageable on the fretboard because we are using this low E string here, we're gonna build our modes, our positions starting on the fifth string, seventh fret, which is E. So that E with the magnet, which is also E, really doesn't have much meaning. These two notes have the same function. But from that E on the fifth string, seventh fret, I'm gonna start building my seven modes. Now there are more than that, more modes than seven, but we're gonna go with the church modes, the traditional ones, 
more on that in a, another video, but here are these patterns. Now we could organize these in different ways. We can go the traditional way, which I don't recommend, which is, you know, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, and that's really the order of appearance of these modes. If you take that major scale, started from the second note, you'd have Dorian, third note, Phrygian. We're not gonna do that. That's not helpful at all. Instead, we're gonna classify these modes by type, major mode, minor mode. Anything musical can be classified in these two big boxes. The major box of things, that's what me putting something in a box, minor box of things, some things are kind of ambiguous. They can maybe go in both. You don't really know. You need to dig deeper to know. I'm talking about sus4, sus2. Again, more on that later, but we're gonna classify these modes by type. In the major box, we're gonna have any scale mode thing that has a major third. The third determines the nature of that mode. In the minor box, we'll have minor thirds. So I'm making this a little more interesting by adding some reverb and delay because we're developing a story here, an Ionian story in this case, which is the first mode from the major box of things. So you have the, the chart here on the screen and then I'm just gonna develop some ideas, listening to in the interaction of these notes. Feel free to skip some notes. You can't go wrong. Take a look at the next of the major modes, Lydian. Very similar, but different. You heard that note? It's also known as the, the augmented fourth. That's what the, the free course, DNA course, will, will teach you about if you haven't gone through it yet. The next one is Mixolydian. This is what it sounds like. The difference can be subtle sometimes depending on the notes that you gravitate around. The goal in this exercise is to really bring out and be in tune with what is known as the characteristic note of these modes. The characteristic note is the note that will differentiate one mode from the other. And in this case, because we're looking at the major box and the major modes, well, that note is not gonna be the major third because that's what makes these part of that box. It's not gonna be the magnet. Uh, the magnet remains the same. It's gonna be other things. Just be in tune with that and listen. Let's continue our exploration here with the minor modes. We'll start with the Dorian. Very colorful, right? And take your time with this to hear all the nuances. You're telling a story here. You're not just learning positions. Maybe try some chords. That's for the Dorian. Very colorful. Now, I'm kind of speeding up through the process here, but I really want you to spend like five minutes on each of these different modes. Remember, you can download the charts for these different scales and modes and, and a few assets that are really gonna help you. The link is below. Check that out, but let's continue exploring this uh, minor box of things. We'll, we'll try the Phrygian. Different, right? Very colorful. A little tense with that minor second, which is different from the major second that we had in the, the, the Dorian, right? This is a minor second. Just telling your story with this, with that constant 
attraction, the magnet. Let's try the Aeolian, also known as the minor, the natural minor scale. Let's not forget about the Locrian. A lot of people avoid that one, but it, it has its purpose. It's a different kind of story. I wish I would have started learning modes that way because that really engages your ear. The fact that we're using the same magnet all the time helps you discern the difference between these modes instead of just seeing them all part of the same system. Yes, they are, they were born from that, but taking these modes and using them as unique and individual scales is really where it's at if you want to play modal. This exercise will really help you understand the construction of these modes. Again, if you need a little bit more help, you should definitely check out my free DNA course at guitarinfusion.com if you have not already. This will unlock your fretboard. It's completely free. Check it out. And if you want to go a little bit further and stick around for another video, well, why don't you watch this one? I think that one will really help you too. And plus I'm using a different guitar. I'll tell you about this one soon, but check that one out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.